What will tomorrow look like? Will it be what you expected? Or something you could never have predicted? Will it be frightening? Or exciting? Is it the reason you can't sleep at night? Or the reason you get up in the morning? Tomorrow will be all of these things. With Hub, you have a partner today who supports you in writing a more resilient, vibrant, and profitable tomorrow, protecting what matters most to you. Because the truth is, tomorrow is a gift, and we want you to be ready for it. It, but sometimes curling just isn't as fun as it can be on the Nintendo Switch. Don't get stuck in your curling club this year. Learn the game inside and out. Play for your favorite country and take the curling world by storm. With up to four players per console, you can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling. Available now only on Nintendo Switch. And a very pleasant good evening and welcome to curling friend fans around the world. This is the quarterfinals of the Alberta Curling Series Major presented by Hub International. Coming to you from the Beaumont Curling Club in Alberta, Canada. We have the teams doing the draw to the button right now to determine hammer. I'm Dave Schmel and I'm joined today by Matt Pring. How you doing, Matt? Hey Dave, how are you doing? Glad to be here. Excited to see this quarterfinal match. Absolutely, and it was the Swiss team of Michael Bruner winning the draw to the button and having Hammer. They'll be throwing the Yellowstones here in the first end. So the center guard goes up for Yanagasawa and the lead stone from Brunner slips to the back, but not quite, eh, very close to being a biter. So it is Michael Brunner from Switzerland playing against, as we mentioned, Rico Yanagasawa from Japan in this quarterfinal matchup. So it looks like the second call here is for guard. Well, rather, rather to the T line. I'm sorry about that. And Michael Brunner electing to follow it down. What do you think of him coming into the house this soon, uh, Matt? Well, I don't hate it. I think that it's definitely a good strategy to open up play. So the, the second stone for Andreas Gerlach coming on down. It's going to come in contact with the shot rock and move it, and they're going to roll off to the side of the forefoot. Not the result that they were looking for. So we're going to set up, see a setup for a takeout here. Probably try to roll on top of the other stone behind cover. And here's that rock coming on the way from second to Kero Yamamoto. They're on it hard to hold in. Now they're now they like it. They get the hit and they're going to stick 
pretty much right there. So it's two Red Rocks in the house right now. And Brunner electing for the draw down again. Uh, he might be trying to, to get a soft weight hit and roll. Waiting for it to curl. Trying to get it to curl now. Now they're going to try to move it over directionally using that single sweeper, and they do remove the one rock with backline weight. Don't really get too much of a roll. So we're going to see more of the same prescription called for by Japan here. They're just a couple inches inside the previous line. Now they're trying to work it over, trying to get the better roll close to the guard, hit the mm. roll, clear everything, and it's still two for them. And now some choices here, and it looks like Michael Burner is going to elect to hit the stone, or is this, or is he calling the run back? I think he's trying to clear, clear the front. It looks like. We'll see. Well, I think like, we have our. Yeah, I think we have our answer right there, coming down with a good bit of weight. We're gonna peel, peel off the top center guard. Mm -hmm. and they're gonna try to replace it. Try to protect what they have there set up in the house. Right, because they are working here to steal. They don't have hammer. And it's unclear. Well, it's better from the overhead. It doesn't look like that back one is hanging on. So they definitely want to, at the very worst, uh, force their opponent to one and not let Michael Burner get away with a blank. So here it's third, Tiyoshi Yamaguchi. That one looks like it might have hit a little bit of a flat spot. It really cut over hard there just before the hog line. Still ended up in a good spot covering up the stone in the back of the forefoot. It looks like Bruner's going to try to get multiple stones to fly here. It's possible he could remove all of them with the perfect shot. We're going to try to hold it, have it come on down, hits the top one and onto the back. Shimmy's off to the side here and it does leave two Jap Japanese stones still sitting in there. And now where do you go if you're uh, Yan Yanagasawa? I think I think he has the right idea trying to replace that stone behind the guard. They know that line. They've been throwing it. Uh, it should end up well there. And if it didn't end up exactly there, if they were on the other side of the house, that's not a bad result either. Now, how concerned, Matt, would he be about drawing underneath the stone that's not your not your own color? Well, you have to be a little bit concerned just because they could uh, raise the guard for a run back and sit shot rock with their own color guard in front of them. Uh, that's always a good thing to have your own color to be able to hit back. So you do have to think about that, but it looks like they're still trying to put it back there. It's not necessarily the easiest shot always to run one back and sit exactly behind the guard. So here's the second from Yamaguchi.
I think they like it. We're on it hard. We're past the, the guard. And that is going to settle. That's a great. Right at, right at the top of the tee line. That's a very nice shot. They can see a sliver of it. Now, is that a big enough sliver? I don't I I don't think it's worth going for and you'd lose the shot rock probably. Do you ever like playing a, uh, a heavy draw, maybe like a back eight foot weight? Yeah, I don't mind that. Well, the ice is, looks like it'd be maybe about uh, board weight. By board weight, we mean just a little bit more than hack. It looks like they're set up to throw like a back line shot here, maybe tee to back line and do just what you maybe suggested to bump that back for rock just a oh they're bit. on a hard they gotta hold it for the line past the guard now trying to make it really good it's gonna hit it's gonna make the takeout and skitter over a deuce it shot stone but that is a perilous situation at best and it's unfortunate they didn't get that rock out of the house either. Ooh, indeed. Although if that third rock, uh, that third rock scores, you're having a bad day all day. All day. They're lining it up. They're just going to tap their red back into that yellow to try to remove it. Now, Matt, I, I think if you do this right, you might be able to uh, direct the raise rock under cover if you're lucky. Yeah, I think the thrown rock will be easier to go under cover than the raised rock. Okay, we will see. Here's the first from the skipper. Well, there you go. Not a bad result. Not There's bad. Four now in the house. I, I'm i happy with that at any time. Runner is, team runner is definitely going to have to kill some of these red rocks in the house. Yeah, it didn't look to me that there's enough finish. Now, we haven't seen anything uh, come around from the outturn side draw-wise to know if you could actually get down into corner freeze. I think if they hit this right on the nose, it's possible they get all, all three of those on the left side there. Now, I definitely see those angles working. That's what I would throw. And feel free to chime in on the strategy on the YouTube chat. We are paying attention to it. I will say my Japanese skills leave quite a bit to be desired. Yes, I also apologize. I cannot read the Japanese uh, writing, but I'm happy to answer the questions also if they're in English. And if I get time, I'll maybe try to translate some of that in the Google Translator. All right, here we go. Trying to get to curl on over. Makes a hit, rolls under cover, and then does stay for second shot. So they... I was a little surprised there that it didn't come with a little more weight. I thought that they were going to try to get rid of those rocks, but it looked like they were just playing down weight. Like it looked like no more than hack weight there. And I guess they thought that that was the best way. And that they didn't do bad. They did move their yellow rock to the top of uh, almost to the four foot, but you know, deep into the eight foot there and they're sitting second shot behind cover. 
So they definitely shrunk the scoring zone for the Japanese team. And it does look like that they are going to draw down and lie to themselves. See where this ends up. We did have a comment in the chat box that they might try to triple take out. And yes, that is what I thought they were going to do. On this hard for line, now they're a little bit more happy with it. Oh, it picked on something. Did you saw that? Yeah, I think that's just our stream. Oh, okay. So it ends up being a high guard, and it, they, they're they one under cover. So it's about underneath about an eight-foot guard. So if you're Bruner here, do, do you try to chase it to get two, or...? I don't I don't know how you I don't know how you do that. You could also try to run it back to, to make your one count. Or if you feel really confident about your down weight, maybe you can snuggle around that top guard. What do you see, Matt? Well this is his last shot, right? Yep. Well, I don't think he can score two points no matter what he throws here. So I would just try to either secure the one or just get, be okay with giving them one going to second and But I think it's better, obviously, if we score. So drawing here isn't bad. Um, tapping your yellow on the other side wouldn't be bad. They look like they're going to try to either draw or they're going to try to tap that red right out of the uh, forefoot which is possible and that would be the best possible scenario because that could possibly give them two right absolutely so here we go final stone on the way and they ran into the guard and that did wreck and it's going to be a steel one for Yanagasawa, so they take first blood here and up one to nothing after one. We'll be back with more here on Curling Stadium. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. Calling all curlers, novice to pro. Ashland Curling Supplies patented rotator disc system lets you customize your slider right in the store. Velcro attachments make it easy to find the sliding platform that's right for you. Shop Ashland Curling Supplies, 700 McPhillips, online at ashland.com. And we're back here from the Beaumont Curling Club in Alberta. The quarterfinals of the Alberta Curling Series Major presented by Hub International. It was a steal one for Yanagasawa in the first end. And so Bruner will still have the hammer 
here in the second end. The center guard is up, and now we have a corner guard on the way from Team Bruner. Dave Schmel along with Matt Pring calling the action live for you here on Curling Stadium. It's always a good day, Curling Stadium. It's been a revolution to our sport, uh, seeing so many more games live stream, exposing that people are now can follow their favorite teams a lot more readily, which is uh, a wonderful thing. The more exposure that curling has, the better, and uh, happy to be a bit of a part of it. Now we have this second stone being drawn in. It does come behind the tee line and to the back eight foot. Now, do you think Bruner's going to throw another guard here? No, he's going to come right on in. Coming on in. I think that uh, having one corner guard at this point is good, and it's enough. I think if he was down a few more points, he would probably put up another guard. But choosing to come in here is definitely the way. We want to welcome all of our viewers out there. Uh, we see you uh, watching Curling Stadium, and we're glad that you're in the chat here with us. That does get around the top guard, and it is going to just come short of the house. So it, they did end up with uh, two corner guards, whether they liked them or not. It's definitely not a bad thing. And it's still the free guard zone, so they are untouchable. And it's going to be a draw into the top four called for. I love this called, Matt. Definitely, definitely one of my favorites is to just put one there, sit in top four, make your opponent do something about it. Uh, we've had a chance to spiel together quite a few times and to be top four all day. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> this one is going to just go and nibble the house. So they got the biter there. That's the only scoring rock right now. And one in the back. Uh, sorry, one in the back uh, 12. Bruner's going to look to draw underneath again here. Your second, Romano Meyer with a throw. I'm, I'm glad to see that he's committed to building the end here. Well, he's actually trying to clear the front is what he's doing here, Dave. Yeah, I, I thought I saw him tap the broom off to the side, didn't you? I did too. He must have changed his mind. Fair enough. The front end, sometimes we'll give some input. Sometimes the skip might change his mind. I found you're, you're always receptive to input, Matt. If there's one thing that's going to go on your tombstone, is it receptive to input? Yes, that's exactly, exactly what I wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to try to draw on in again here with the second with the uh, Yamamoto stone. I think they like it. It's curling up pretty nice. This is gonna this is gonna be a high guard. So probably not the distance they were hoping for. It's definitely not what Team Bruner is wanting. All this stuff up in the front. Well, I think he's gonna own it right now and come in in himself because as we see it there, those rocks were offset up front, so one rock will not remove everything right now. Right. Well, he's trying to be the first one to get there. And look at the amount of rotation we have here on this rock. And that I'm one picks sure. up light. Might have to get my my stopwatch out, but it looks like the ice is maybe slowing up on them because they're all throwing pretty light at this moment. 
doing something. All right, so now we're going to try to draw in with that. Let's see who gets there first, Matt. I'm thinking that Team Japan is going to get there first. So this is Tiyoshi Yamaguchi getting ready to throw this. They talked it over a little bit. Maybe trying to get a, a handle of the uh, split times from their from the sweepers in the front end there, because uh, looks like in the last few rocks, both uh, both squads have had a little bit of a time uh, issue finding the weight. They're on this right out of his hand. Trying to get it there. And that is past the guard and still gonna be sure of the house. So we have a phalanx of guards in front of the house. They're gonna try to go to the other side of this sheet. I was waiting for some somebody to do that because I you know I find that we uh from time to time get tunnel vision and think, forget that there's two sides to the sheet. Sometimes skips are always waiting for the other skip to be braver than they are. I, you can't have fear. Fear loses games, Matt. So our People in our chat room, too many guard stones. Which team will get there first? And I'll guard stone carnival. Totally agree. There are a lot of guards now. You know, it, it's great if you're if you're sitting in a good spot. If I was living in the top four right now, I'd I'd hug all those guards, but nobody is. One of the, one of the other things I could do is come down. All, just off of uh, center line and hit into that uh, yellow guard that's closest to the 12 foot and roll behind cover that way. Uh, Matt, your uh, good friend Steve Johnson just said that you might call this a knee drag house. That is absolutely correct. This is very knee dragian. Hey. Reference to our home club, the Bucks County Curling Club, uh, and one of our members who never met a guard he didn't love. All right, this stone, it, trying to uh, try it from the other side now. Working in, we're past that whole bevy of guards, and this is a really nice one right to the top of the forefoot, well thrown by Yamaguchi. As predicted. I thought that Team Japan would be the first to get there. So now Bruner's facing two, already having given up a steal. So, uh, well, you can't be thrilled. That was a really good draw behind cover. And we're going to try to make some noise here. This is Anthony Patu's rock. He gets a few moving, uh, but it's still the two Red Rocks line shot. I like to use a game like this, an end like this to show club curlers and younger curlers the value of clearing the center earlier on in the end.
So right now, if you're if you're throwing red, Matt, um, do you like a, a high guard? I kind of do because I mean, sure, uh, Team Brunner has that draw in, but I love that's... love another guard. I don't mind also the uh, tap there. That would definitely apply the pressure. Of course, it does always. That leaves it more susceptible to being run back. But I think another guard right on, just touching the center line would be great. It looks like they're discussing possibly drawing to the top four. And that yep. that is the call. I mean, now I, I guess I like it, but both teams have had trouble with that side of the sheet this end. So, I mean, I'm not putting down the broom with any level of confidence right now, are you? I'm never afraid to make any shot. Well, that is a good quality to have. Let's see if Yanagasawa can channel his inner Matthew Pring. I think he's called good line here, and he, uh, he just has to throw the right way. That that shot's definitely there. They were struggling earlier, the team, because they were just a little bit light. Okay, first one here for the Japanese skipper is on the way. They're merely escorting it down the ice at the moment. Now well, trying to ca carve it over. Needed to curl. And that is going to wreck on the guard. That, that's not bad at all. It, it guards up the, 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 the track for the draw. We like this. If your team, Japan, it's not a bad thing what they just did. No, it's definitely an acceptable outcome. Um, it does obviously give this shot back for, for Michael Bruner. And with any luck, I, I mean, you, you get, you probably stuff one of them, but you get at least two of them to go. Well, he's definitely not putting anything in the scoring with this shot, but like you say, he can definitely remove some scoring. Well, he's going to have an opportunity to score one regardless here, whether it's uh, whether it's the raise on the, on the two to his left as he's throwing or a straight draw. So let's see. So here's Michael Bruner coming in with his first skip rock. We put, it on, put some nice weight on it. Now they're trying to hold it. On the one, splits off the second, and two of them do go away. It is still one red stone for Yanagasawa. That was a necessary outcome. Now, that was a, a, a big shot because giving up an, a big steal this early in the game against any of the teams uh, at this event would not be uh, not be desirable. However, if you are going to give up a big end, it's better to give it up early in the game. I like I like if this rock ends up uh, full leg touching four here. I mean, you won't always want to steal, but you're happy for the force. Absolutely, you want to make sure you have that you stay on the right side of that coin. Now, here's that last draw for the skipper. Bring it in. Pass all the guards. Now, are you going to drag it in? We're to the eight foot. And sitting one, two. That's perfect. I, I would say the force is on with that. I would definitely say that uh, the objective was met there. And Bruner's going to be left. Uh, I don't see any. Now there's possibly a miracle shot for two, but this early in the game, you're not going to do that. Just. Draw for one and move on. Yeah, the only way they can score two here is to run back the two guards 
in front of the house, at the closest to the center line. And it could potentially run that red rock back and hit the red rock in the back 12 on the a little bit on the left side. Uh, and now therefore the, the running rock would also be removed. That's just the only way they could do it. But that's a very high risk, low percentage shot. This is definitely what you want to do. Just get your one, move on. So Michael Bruner coming down with the final stone of the second end. And that's, I, that's going to come on down the backing and be made no problem. So Team Bruner ties it up. It's 1-1 after two ends here at the Alberta Curling Series Major brought to you by Hub International. We'll be back after these words. What will tomorrow look like? Will it be what you expected? Or something you could never have predicted? Will it be frightening or exciting? Is it the reason you can't sleep at night or the reason you get up in the morning? Tomorrow will be all of these things. With Hub, you have a partner today who supports you in writing a more resilient, vibrant, and profitable tomorrow, protecting what matters most to you because the truth is, tomorrow is a gift, and we want you to be ready for it. So you're a pizza person, but you're married to a wing person, and your kids are salad people? You can't pick your fam, but with over 50 menu items to choose from, you can make them all happy. Order today and enjoy Boston pizza at home. curlers novice to pro ashland curling supplies patented rotator disc system lets you customize your slider right in the store velcro attachments make it easy to find the sliding platform that's right for you shop ashland curling supplies 700 mcphillips online at ashland.com and we're back here for the beaumont curling club the Alberta Curling Series Major tied up one apiece after two. This quarterfinal matchup. We have a center guard up for Team Bruner and now a corner guard on the way from Yanagasawa. This is our one of our two quarterfinal games, six teams made the playoffs, two advanced through with buys. Uh, and then we have, so that's uh, Benny Cap from Germany, advanced already, and Aaron Sluchinski already advanced. This is one of our quarterfinal matchups, and our other quarterfinal matchup is Danny Casper of the USA versus Wouter G uh, Goskins of the Netherlands. So they'll face Kappen Sochinski in the semis. That was good execution of the come around there. And now Yanagasawa is calling for the draw behind his corner guard. We had a couple really bit uh, busy ends to uh, start off the action, especially the last end. If you didn't catch it or just tuning in, we had an awful lot of guards in the house. That draw does slip in, but it's uh, 
a little deeper than they would like there, Matt. Yeah, ultimately, you kind of like it above the T-line. Once it slips past there, sometimes the opposing skip will like to put one right on top of you. And that is the call exactly uh, for Romano Meyer to make. And therefore, it kind of eliminates that, that corner guard advantage that you're trying to build. So we got a message in the chat. Yanagasawa equals young naked sour. Are you trying to help us or out phonetically, phonetically or on our pronunciation? Young, young naked sour. Well, we thank you. Thank you for the help because let's face it, we need help. We are not uh, definitely not even my 27th language. Right. <laughs> well, I like it. Young Maggie Sauer. But, uh, at least yeah. I know now. Young Nagat Sauer. I'm writing that down. I'm, I assure you I am. Put it in our notes. Now, that's a nice play by Team Nagat Sauer. Nagat Sauer. There we go. We can do it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we got a little bit of broom measuring here and... Uh, we're going to throw a hack weight here and take out the redstone. Too many syllables, they say. We're doing the best we can, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so hack weight coming down the sheet. They're on this hard for line. Got to go if you're going to get past the center guard. Got to go if you're going to get there. And oh, just skitters by. But off the top one not does not clear the one that's in the house. So that is not the outcome he desired. So instead of Putting up a guard here. Looks like he wants to kill this yellow. And I'm sure they're wanting to get the roll inside. Behind cover. Now I would, uh, I definitely want to make sure he make the hit here first, Matt, and not get too cute with it. Oh, agreed. And it, and honestly, it's okay if they roll outside. They have hammer, so that's not a bad thing to have it out there. But they met the objective. And they are sitting shot. It, it's Bruner sitting second. And Bruner electing to kill the rock just thrown. Again, it's because that other rock is behind the T-line that he's not too concerned about that yet. Oh, we have a sympathizer. Tachi. No worries. You don't know how many Canadian players' names are mispronounced in Japan. Yana Gasawa. That's exactly how I had it written out the first time. Yeah. <laughs> Yana Gasawa. That's better. I'm sorry. It's my Philadelphia accent coming through. It, it messes a lot of things up. <laughs> like water. 
you, you want me to say water? There you go. Be like water. It is what it's water. Right. Be like water. That's Bruce Lee. That's yeah. Well, I need to go back to my uh, theatrical training and learn how to lose my accent. That oh, only. Yeah. Bring back your Shakespearean accent. <laughs> Only bad Shakespeare sounds like has a Shakespearean accent. Huh? Oh. Perfect pronunciation, yes! Huzzah! Oh, we did it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, they got a little bit outside there and weren't able to remove that Yellowstone. So it is Shotstone for Bruner, second rock belonging to Yanagasawa. I think this is a good time to addressed the shot rock I think that's what they're doing all right so here is the second stone away for Patu. Snakes past the guard. It's going to make the hit and roll nicely under cover. Now, that does, once again, that's behind the T line and now half buried. So, choices here. What choices do you see, Matt? Well, there's two choices. You can try to hit and remove some of those yellow rocks, or you can draw behind and sit on top of their yellow rock. Uh, I think that's probably a good play. I would draw here. I too like the draw here. We have a Let's question. Chance of steal or force for Bruner. There's definitely a chance to steal or force for Burner. But there's still a, there's still a chance uh, for Red to score two here. Now, I do like I do like uh, removing the guard and run. Uh, you could make all those rocks move if we move them. Get three of them to go to start move, moving for sure. And it looks like some removal is what the doctor ordered. And here we go. Coming out with a good amount of weight is Yamaguchi. Contacting the top one and one in the house. Opening it up. He opened it up. Didn't uh, move the ones that he really wanted to. However still beneficial uh interesting to note that two it is two redstones that are hanging out over there on the edge of the 12 foot and i just think yeah burners <laughs> just looked at them, just looked at them and said huh we, well we don't ever want them to score right he's a little concerned about them they could come into play depending on what happens i like if i was bruner to draw to the edge of four, middle of eight foot, on uh, where his broom side is currently, that side of the sheet. If you if you're over there, less likely a chance of those red rocks coming into play later on to bite you. Looks like the front end had a little bit of an interjection there, and Bruner acknowledged it briefly, and then quickly put his head back down. 
if at some point you uh, think about putting a guard up, you got to hope that it's the perfect guard. It looks like he's going to draw down here. It could also be a guard, but looks like he tapped the ice uh, near his own stone. I don't love draw. I don't love like sitting on the back for rock per se, because you, you could remove them even if it's locked pretty good with if you throw enough weight. Well, let's see what happens here. Here's the first stone away from Michael Bruner. This looks to just be a guard. Yeah, I think that's what they were trying to do. They got to hope that it doesn't overcurl. And then I think that finishes pretty nicely. Yeah, it's pretty good. However, they can still chip those out if they'd like. They're accessible. So two stones remaining for Yanagasawa here and asking his their front end if they like running the whole pile back or hitting a big roll. That I'm not a fan of. I like throwing a hacker board weight hit here, rolling over, flopping over. I think that's what they're look like they're talking about. I think well, that got to be yeah, got to be really tight to that guard. So uh, this is gonna be an adventurous shot. Uh, I think they throw hack weight here. I think it definitely, you can get to that. It's going to be up to Yamaguchi calling the line and Yamamoto and Koizumi sweeping it to hold the skipper's rock true here. Here we go. First rock. I believe Yaganasawa can do it. All right, now we're on it for line. We're up to the center. It looks a little bit lighter than the weight we were discussing. Got to hold it. Got to pass the first one. Gets a hit and rolls there you into, go. The, into the open. And he uh, removed it. He did remove it. Now, Bruner has an excellent opportunity to set up a force here. I think if he would have thrown just a little bit more weight, he would have rolled over more. He would have been happier with that. Now, Bruner has to, gonna want to address this stone, but the biggest thing is he's got to be sitting two here to get the force on. Because if this isn't well made, it could possibly leave a double back for three. Well, he kept tapping the rock and then tapping the ice over like he wanted to uh, just hit that and flop over. I often tap my coffee cup at the restaurant, but the waitress doesn't always fill it with coffee. What does she fill it with? Well, hopefully a good shot here. Key shot coming. Michael Bruner with his last in the third end. Got to make the hit and uh, rolls over nicely. That's well thrown. Very nice shot there. And the broom goes down instantly. The force is on. So it's going to be a draw basically to the button for one. Yeah, Team Japan, they tried to build an end. 
and it just didn't work out for them. They are forced to one here. Very good uh, end by Team Bruner. They executed when they had to. The skip really bailed them out. Yeah, it went from looking like a possible good steal to having to dance through the raindrops to put the force on. But here we are. Final stone needs any piece of the button to score. On it right off the jump. But I think they like it. They're brushing pretty good. And that settles in. Nice shot. No problem. That's a single point. And after three great, ends. Great job by the sweepers. Absolutely. A very well managed shot. So it's a single point for Yanagasawa. After three ends, it's two to one. We'll be back with more in a minute. I've been raised on the farm since day one, so you know, I was born into it. My grandfather came in here in 1905. I want to continue the farm for him and generations to come. So. I think it's a privilege that we get to be here. It's just a wonderful way of life. You know, what job is there that you can go to work with your dad and brother, with your kids by your side? Doesn't get much better than that. curlers novice to pro ashen curling supplies patented rotator disc system lets you customize your slider right in the store velcro attachments make it easy to find the sliding platform that's right for you shop ashen curling supplies 700 mcphillips online at ashen.com And we're back here. The Alberta Curling Series Major presented by Hub Air National from the Beaumont Curling Club in Alberta. Dave Schmel along with Matt Pring. We're bringing you this quarterfinal ma final match. And it's two to one in favor of Yanagasawa after three. So it will be Michael Bruner with the hammer. I'd like to also mention Tim's Ice Manufacturing. They're Alberta's leading ice making manufacturer. And Ashim Curling Supplies. From brooms to shoes. Arnold Ashim has been supporting the curling world forever. And definitely designed some unique equipment. You ever see that zigzag broom that they used to make? Oh, yeah. I've known people that have brushed with those brooms. The first time I saw one of them in person, I'm like, wow, what is that? And then I said, you know what? That kind of could work. Right. <laughs> so we have two two uh, redstones frozen nose to nose here. And there's no choice but to uh, abandon the, the uh, guard protocol here. You, Gotta, he's going to come right at these. Well, it's still possible he could go right at these and still roll behind his corner guard. Yeah, or maybe just kind of jostle him a little bit. Or he's definitely going to get rid of at least one of them. 
comes into contact, pushes the one out, and then leaves his stone frozen to it. So that's keyed up for him to use later. Might be enough of an angle on them to make them both go. But instead, he's going to elect to... Use throw guard. Yep. Getting a lot of curl on this sheet. Good job by the ice crew there at the Beaumont Curling Club. We like to always give a shout out to the ice makers. We're not biased in that at all. <laughs> a lot of hard work goes into it. Lots of coffee. Always underappreciated. Well, but, but without great ice, you're not going to have great shots. Uh, for a while at our club, we used to have posted a poster saying that uh, people who can't swim don't blame the water. <laughs> old proverb I think that was Confucius <laughs> a lot of brushing going on right now this looks like it's gonna be tight to the guard just squeezes by hey, and that is gonna roll on over and it's gonna be two for Bruner that just made it by via skosh For those of us that are joining us watching from around the world, what is a skosh, Dave? Well, a skosh is, it's, uh, it's less than a bit, but it's more than a tad. There you have it. He's trying to decide what to do now. Yeah, a couple options here. Uh, do you like the double here, Matt? I think it's there. And it's, you know, that's what he's lining up, trying to figure out the angles. Well, I think it's there much more naturally hitting the one off the center first. Absolutely. You definitely always want to get the higher one first. And if you play at this low one, you're going to look to, to roll under, which is another option. I'm not sure what he's calling for exactly here. I think he's trying to hit and roll under center. That's what it looks like. I'm not 100% sold, Matt. I won't lie. Well, the broom is almost exactly in the middle of the two rocks. We think it's a hit and roll. Could be. Yeah, it's definitely a hit and roll by the handle he put on. Yep, here it comes down with the intern. Now we're going to make the hit. Now, is the roll going to be good? It rolls really big, really big, really big, and... Rolls good. It's behind cover. It's it's uh, three-quarters buried. You could definitely see it from the hack. And he's going to go for it. Yeah, he's going to chase it with about back line weight, it looks. So going to yeah. ask... Meyer, his second to do that. Wanted to roll just another six to 12 inches there. Yeah. 
Meyer getting some last second feedback from one of the sweepers. And Meyer stones away on it right off the get go. Hustling to get past the guard. Got to get past the guard. Got to get past the guard. And you're going to wick and wreck. Now they are going to wisely sweep it into the house. They knew that right off his hand, so maybe he stead it a little bit. The Agonisau is definitely going to be looking at this double again, possibly. And he likes this one better than the last one, it looks like. Well, this is pretty natural. You hit either stone, you can get it. So Yamaguchi sets himself in the hack. And delivers his first to two. Through. There you go. Nicely executed. Nice shot. The double's made and it sticks right there. Now Bruner's got got a little bit of digging out to do. He's going to start by hitting it, the stone that was just thrown, it looks like. Speaking of digging out, I did notice some snow on the mountains. A friend sent me some photos of Alaska. And uh, I'm sure throughout Canada, they're starting to see some snow on the mountaintops. Well, to our friends up north, uh, hope you enjoyed summer. <laughs> It's always ominous when you start seeing the snow and every morning you wake up, that line just gets a little bit lower and lower. <laughs> and Bruner makes a hit, rolls a little bit, so it's under cover now. So option time here for Yanagasawa. Control under. Or is he looking to run his own back? I think he's running it back. Yep, that looks like, yeah. But I don't know, because he's looking at that other rock in the... He could well, be. well, there's your answer right there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I definitely like this call better is what I would have called. Gets a run back and rolls the uh, stone under cover. So they said two for the moment. It gives Bruner a chance to hit and roll under cover. I think he was looking at the shooter where it was going to roll in correlation to the shot rock at the time. I think that's what he was looking at by when he was tapping his rock over there. Or tapping his broom over there, sorry. So Team Brunner is going to try to remove the shot rock and roll behind the other two rocks to sit and shot. We'll see if he executes. Anthony Batu with his second along on the way. Trying to make a curl. Back and forth, on and off, usually a very good sign. It's good, but it's going to hit and stay. Well exposed. Now he, he's one. Of the, he's tapping way over there, about the eight foot. I wonder if that's where he wants it to roll to. Yeah, I think he's trying to split the house wide open here. I would prefer to just roll right to to the center line. Well, but then possibly you leave that uh, something for 
Brunner to work with under cover there with this with using that center guard. Uh, this is this is definitely more the play to put the force on. Well, he, he's he's tapping there like he might like it there now. It's, I mean, there's definitely uh, something you can an argument to be made for both sides. So out there in curling land, what do you think? What are we going to do out there in the chat? I like hitting this and rolling to just touch center line above the T line. We will soon find out. But if he does roll way over there in the full eight, it's not bad. So here's the skipper with his first. Trying to work it over, trying to use that knifing motion. It's going to hit and not get quite enough roll. No, it didn't look like it really rolled at all, in fact. It, it rolled it rolled a tad a skosh uh, maybe a skosh almost a skosh it was in the realm of curling of uh, rolling a skosh so I noticed that we got Boston pizza on the button have you ever had Boston pizza I have not have you met I have I have indeed had Boston pizza it is not quite like New York City style pizza. Well, that's if it was New York City style pizza, it would be called New York City style pizza. That's why it's called Boston pizza. That's right. I guess you might just have to be a Southie to enjoy it. I'm not even getting into the whole Southie. Uh, that's, that's way above my pay grade. So we got Bruner with his first skip rock away here. He's going to try to hit hit and roll over a bit. A bit more than a skosh. That's correct. Now this one also needs to curl over. Might have found the same little straight spot in the ice. Oh, that's that get, a, that's, that gets a yeah, better roll. And, and it's pretty decently buried at least half a rock from the hack. Now you can see a sliver of it. Looks like he's going to try to pick it out. He's going to pick it out. He's probably going to try to roll there to the left side of the house behind that other rock somewhere. Uh, to the chat there, Domino's and Pizza Hut are absolutely everywhere. I was just in Frankfurt, Germany and Right outside the uh, Frankfurt Zoo, there was a Pizza Hut. I will say that Domino's and Pizza Hut are better than Boston Pizza. That's just my opinion. Oh, well, I would never want to, you know, say anything poorly of our sponsors without having given them a chance. And we're going to get to that rock. Got to make sure it gets all the way out, and they do. So the force is on. I will say that Boston Pizza is a better place to go and hang out. And that is a nice thing. It's kind of like a Red Robin or Fridays, but more specialized towards pizza. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, so it's a draw for one for Michael Burner. Needs the eight foot. Yep. 
Crusher seem pretty happy with it. They're on it now. That shot is made and delivered. So, that's a single point there. We're trading ones, which means we're all tied up at two. Halfway through this game. We'll be back in a moment from Alberta. So you're a pizza person, but you're married to a wing person, and your kids are salad people? You can't pick your fam, but with over 50 menu items to choose from, you can make them all happy. Order today and enjoy Boston pizza at home. We're for agriculture, for growers, doers, whatever it takers. We're for doing things with purpose. We're for the little guy with big guy dreams. We're for agriculture. We're for you. Nutrien Ag Solutions, leading the field. What will tomorrow look like? Will it be what you expected? Or something you could never have predicted? Will it be frightening? Or exciting? Is it the reason you can't sleep at night? Or the reason you get up in the morning? Tomorrow will be all of these things. With Hub, you have a partner today who supports you in writing a more resilient, vibrant and profitable tomorrow protecting what matters most to you because the truth is tomorrow is a gift and we want you to be ready for it look so we're, we're, we're here at the fourth after the fourth end break here it's tied up two to two yanagasawa versus Michael Bruner. So halfway through this game, scheduled for eight ends here in the quarterfinals of the Alberta Curling Series Major, sponsored by Hub International. Matt, halfway through, uh, how would you assess these teams? Well, I would say that uh, they're playing pretty well. They're pretty evenly matched. Um, it's a good reason why this is the quarterfinals. So what we want to see is a good game, and I think that's what we're watching. We do have uh, Naoki in the chat hearing the word pizza repeatedly. I get hungry. And I would say there's no better place to get pizza than Boston's. So it will be red with the hammer in the fifth end. Both teams are taking their their break. So Yanagasawa went four to two, four and two on the way in here. Their first game they defeated Sherrod, then they lost to to Young and So sorry, Tao. And then they won against Sherrod. They won against Tao and one against De Young to get to where we are now. And for Team Bruner, 4-1 to one is their record coming into this. They defeated Pfeiffer. They lost to Danny Casper, who is playing in the other uh, quarterfinal right now. They defeated Nobert, Purcell, and De Young to end up in this matchup. So there's a purse of 30,000 Canadian dollars up for grabs here, 9,000 to the winning team. 6,000. They have oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Matt. I was going to say they have played each other 3 times previously. And how do those matchups go, Matt? Team Bruner has won two 
and Yanagisawa won. However, uh, the win by Yanagisawa was September 9th, 2022, but it was in Alberta. In this very same event? Yes, correct. And that was also a tight game. It was uh, 5-4. So uh, they're playing themselves in a uh, similar manner than their first game. That's correct. So it could come down to the wire. Definitely looks like it's going to be exciting. We're scheduled for... I do not know the age of, of uh, any of the Japanese curlers. If folks want to throw that in the uh, chat, that would be appreciated. Seeing a question up there. So Yanagasawa is going to have the hammer here. But Yanagasawa is 21 years old. Yamaguchi is 38 years old. And Kuizumi is 35. So we have a guard up to start here. Now that is touching the center line. They are playing the no tick rule. So that stone can't be removed. The no tick rule. What do you think of the no tick rule, Matt? Well, Purely designed to generate more offense. Um, I don't mind it. I think after all of us have gotten pretty good at the tick shot, now we don't throw that very much anymore. I ran a bonds field just a couple of weeks ago at our club and we had a question from the team saying, uh, are you playing the no tick rule? And I said, no folks, you are free to miss all the tick shots you desire. <laughs> that hasn't filtered down the club level play at a lot of curling clubs yet. No. Nice draw and recover there uh, by Andreas Gerlach. I don't think it's a rule that's necessary for club play. That was a very nice draw. You're right. And this one is coming down rather nicely also. And that is going to come on down to be brushed and be pretty well even with it. Very close for shot stone right now. It does appear uh, for my five dollars to be Bruner as shot. I, I would have to agree from where I'm perched at. You got a good view down there in San Antonio, eh? I can see the overhead as good as about anybody else can see it.
So the stone from Team Brunner is going to come down and freeze. Well, it's going to stop just short of the redstone. Now, I think we're going to see a little bit of housekeeping. I think that's a great play by Team Brunner. Now, important to note here, you know, uh, the free guard zone uh, pre prevents you from removing your opponent's stone. Doesn't say you can't do anything with, with uh, your own card, but that's... Well, that was the sixth rock. So... Oh, uh, that's, that's right. Our stones weren't updated yet. Okay, there we go. There they went. Oh, I told you I could see the overhead just about as well as anybody where, I, where I'm perched at. As always, Matthew, you are correct. Not sure why Bruner's taking so much time looking at this. So what's your call if it's so obvious? He's going to uh, tap his yellow into that red. Well, Meyer's going to come on down and uh, take a look at it with him. And in fact, we're going to have a little team powwow about it. They're basically talking about where they want the rocks to end up. They want to get rid of that red rock, but where are the rocks going to end up? That's what they're they're talking about. So, depending on where they want the rocks to end up is depending on where they want to hit that front yellow. They want to be bad to place a yellow rock right next to the one that's above the red either. No, I wouldn't hate that. But if you hit this yellow... Just to the outside. Or if you hit it to the, to the inside, to the center line side your shooter can roll pretty much on top of your other rock you know it'll leave a little bit of space but yeah because if you want if you're going to force your opponent here you're going to uh need to put some separation on your stones right so i think they're going to hit this center line side or they're just going to put one next to it like we were talking about we just got a center guard Oh, there you go. That's okay, too. That looks good. It overcurled just a little bit, I think. I think if they would have, you know, a fifth of that rock across the center line would be optimal. So the decision here right now is do you try to build it in here because... Right now, if you want to, you could hit the abort button and almost assuredly make this a blank. I think if you put a rock right where he had his broom in front of the yellow, but you can still build an end. Furthermore, it's possible, it's pretty possible to get a double here also. So definitely been an interesting end. All this uh, without very much happening out front. Only the one 
guard that they just threw. So we see a little bit of everything in this game from from every guard in the world to precious few. I'm not sure if they're calling for this double or they're I I I think they are they're uh I think they're aborting here. Yeah. This is a little bit down weight. Looks like he got a little bit outside. Yep. So here we're coming down with about a heavy control weight. Just and it's just going to hit the guard and open things up. No harm, no foul. We're back where we were before Team Brunner threw his last shot. That does leave them a corner guard to work with. Maybe they can use that later in the end. So here is Meyer with his second. I'm, I apologize, but dude with his first. I think they're they're trying to stack another yellow into the pile. They just made the pile heavier and they did offset it some. They definitely made it to where Team Japan will have to remove that rock that they just threw. So it's possible we can see all of them go away here. Assuredly, something should happen. At least two rocks are going to go away. Not that much weight. Yeah, he took a decent amount of ice. So definitely trying to work with what's still there now it's getting good movement sweeping hard contact and we did reshuffle the deck here a little bit so that, that leaves it one red sitting shot sometimes it's best just to jostle the pile and you get a different look at the end it becomes a lot different it does leave them shot, which is obviously a good thing, but uh, Brunner has a clean rocket, a clean look at shot rock. He's going to try pick it out and lay fo uh, four. Depending on where he gets, gets the rock, where he strikes the rock, and how much weight, we'll see if he sticks around or not. Second stone for Batude coming down, sweeping and hold the, hard to hold the line. They're going to make contact, get a big roll, so it does leave them line four. Well, they got a couple options. Are they trying to draw to, to sit on it? Angle ready? They're trying to run back, I think. Yes? Yes, it looks like they're going to try to push uh, their red streak back and sit shot and sit shot or second under cover. It'll, it'll probably be second under cover if it just straight jams. But 
it's a much better spot to be in. You never want to be facing four if your opponent's rocks, that's for sure. <laughs> no. This one comes out with authority from Yamaguchi, from uh, Yamamoto. Nice. Oh, wow, look at that. Don't know if that was the called shot, but it's not a bad outcome. So I would say, Matt, that that takes a steal. You're not so worried about that anymore. No. If I'm Japan, I'm happy. They're there. We took away the steal. We're still looking at getting forced, but that's all right. You take it and continue on. So much like their meetup last year, this game is very much nip and tuck back and forth. And again, that game ended five to four. So. We're on this rock pretty hard brushing. Gotta try to hold it. Now they like where it's at, trying to steer the roll. Trying to leave some jam possibilities there. Now, hmm. I like this. Oh, it's, it, the, the, it's a double. Is there a triple there, Matt? There's certainly a double. I have to look at the, the overhead. Uh, yeah, there's a triple there. There's definitely a triple there. You're but, gonna hit that with a ton of weight. But I don't care about the triple. I would try to hit a double and roll over there to be shot. Oh, I'd love that. If you can roll frozen in the corner there, that would be really awesome, right? Right, absolutely. That would be the most ideal outcome. And then you, you might, you know, make some chicken salad out of these chicken scraps here. Chicken salad's always good on a Sunday evening. All right, so we got a heater coming here from Yanagasawa. On the one, on the, and over and makes the top double. He gets the unconventional double. Yeah, that's the harder the doubles to make for sure. Uh, so they are sending shot stone. Well, the four is on for sure or not. Well, Brunner needs to make sure that happened. Don't want, don't want uh, to let Red get away with a blank because carrying that hammer into the sixth end would be is pivotal. He just needs to either nose or get a little bit outside here, and he's golden for the force. But like you say, if he's not careful and it overcurls. And he goes more towards the middle. The double will be there for the blank. So Michael Bruner, final stone here at end number five. Makes a hit, and that's going to get her out. A blank so there. So that was a little half shot that could come back to bite Michael Bruner. Could decide. It could ultimately decide the game because through the transfer of hammer. Already picked up the number five tile there, almost in resignation. So blank attempt on the way. For Rico Yan Yanagasawa. And, he, and that's made, so it's gonna be a blank in. 
We remain tied with Red holding on to the all-important hammer going into end number six. We'll be back with the last three ends in just a second here on Curling Stadium. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. Calling all curlers, novice to pro. Asham Curling Supplies patented rotator disc system lets you customize your slider right in the store. Velcro attachments make it easy to find the sliding platform that's right for you. Shop Asham Curling Supplies, 700 McPhillips, online at Asham.com. Sometimes curling just isn't as fun as it can be on the Nintendo Switch. With up to four players per console, you can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling. Available now only on Nintendo Switch. Okay, back with you here from the Beaumont Curling Club. Sixth end of the uh, quarterfinals of the Alberta Curling Series Major. Presented by Hub International here on Curling Stadium. The two teams traded single points through the first four ends. We had a blank end in the fifth. And it is Yanagasawa with the hammer in the all important six end. A center guard is up from Michael Bruner. I'm Dave Schmel and I'm here with Matt Pring, and we're going to bring you these last three ends. That center guard's pretty high. And that is a tight, tight corner guard, but they did agree it's a guard. We like guards that are tight. And we got a commenter in the chat box. Hammer on even end is always good. That is correct. A hundred percent, you are correct. So now we have the second guard going up. Both teams are gonna be all in to score in this end because this is pivotal. That's a beauty. That's a beauty of a guard there. Touching the center line. So, gonna draw in undercover here or try to be first to get there first to the forefoot so here's I was oh I'm sorry Dave no go ahead Matt I was going to say I wouldn't be so uh fast to abandon my corner guard that I just put over there. I would try to draw behind it. Well, you are, of course, inviting your opponent to go right there. So, electing to take a little bit of the safer option and get there himself. And that does come around everything and tucks just to the top of the forefoot. So, a well-thrown stone by Koizumi. But there's room for Bruner to slip underneath that. It looked as if he tapped where he wants to sit on it. Hey. 
Oh yeah, right in front of it. Yeah, I see that depth now. So Stone on the way from Romano Meyer, the second for Team Bruner. Oh, looks like they might be on the guard. And it's gonna just kiss their guard. So game on. Here we go. So, two things here. You can clutter up a little bit. Uh, right now, I see that there's a that stone just thrown some danger, possibly. Well, again, anytime you want the hammer, you kind of want the center clean. And that is what he's going to do. A well thrown peel there. And Bruner not um, abandoning the, the draw game yet here. But he might be either drawing, he could be putting up another guard. I would personally like a little tappity tap. Little. Now it's it yeah it's interesting because they are gunned up on the uh, shot stone now. It's loaded. The gun is loaded. For those of you at home that don't know what loaded means, <coughs> it means that those rocks are in a straight line to that shot rock, and anywhere you hit it at the top going to allow that back rock to slide right into it. Yeah, pretty much pretty much even your first year curler is going to make that one. So now so now how do you uh, work around that and still keep the offense going that? You could come down and jostle them around. Or, be a good, yeah, be a good time for a jostle. Or what you could do is draw around the other side and put another one back there. It'd be good if you could even tap it over. I think that's what they're talking about. Yeah, I, I think that they're uh, leaning a little bit towards the jostle type play here. Uh, if you saw in our chat, uh, they are telling us that Yamamoto's whole family is curlers. It is something that you find quite a bit in curling, that it's an entire family affair. It's always nice to see the generations of curlers in a family when they all get to curl together. But I think you could hit this right in the crotch, right where his broom is. And that would be interesting also. Looks like that's the call. We're going to split them both off. All got all of them. And they um, all went. Look at that. That's a great shot. Great all result. those, yes, all those yellow stones flew there. And after the dust settles, it is one red in the house. Team Burner, they can't do anything except tip their cap and say, nice shot. Absolutely. Yeah. 
And here they come now with a soft weight hit. Just got by the guard. And rolls Beautiful. under cover, nicely thrown. Beautiful shot. I kind of like the straight run here. I like the straight run back and perhaps rolling it behind cover over there. It looks like he's going to do it with uh, a very controlled weight. That seems like a lot of ice for this shot. They're still talking about it. Uh, they are. Uh... Yeah, the chat likes to run back. I like to run back. I don't think they're sold on the run, run back, guys. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely not run back ice call. No, this is ice to uh, kind of just kind of uh, escort it out the house and leave yourself shot stone open. It could be splitting that other rock into the house with the shoot. I, yeah, but you might you might be saving that t towards the end. But we'll see what happens here. It's coming on down now. They are trying to hold it straight. It, they right. are going to split. And they both are going to end up on the house. That's not bad. So they're sitting 2-3 right now with Brunner sitting shot rock. Brunner eyeing up the cross house double here. Yeah, it's there, but it's got, it's got Jam City written on that. Uh, I don't know. He's definitely calling it. Well, we're going to see some heat here. Big peel weight coming. From Patu. Going to make contact with the one and come on over, but not quite on to... Uh, the other stone, and uh, that's uh, danger, Will Robinson, right now. Well, Team Bruner City 1 2. <clears throat> I mean, I think there's certainly a way you could make both of them and sit to yourself. He's also talking about making the hit on the top one and having a big roll and putting a lot of separation out again. Well, they have three rocks to go, so that's not that's not bad to hit that top one and roll over and then have to sit two. Then Bruner will try to hit one and roll. He won't be able to hit both. But then, you know, it plays out like that. But I kind of like going for two of them here. Well, unfortunately, that ice could work. Ice could be either shot, so we'll have to wait for him to throw. This looks like this looks like double ice to me. But you're right. Depending on the weight he throws, that's a pretty uh, control weight shot. Yeah. Right. So more than likely, he's going to roll, try to roll it over, like he was originally saying trying to knife it over and well we're going to get them both moving not far. no not it is far enough for them to be sitting Ooh, who is shot that's the question that michael Bruner's asking either way i think you just come you're coming after that red so yeah, it doesn't much matter, but I think it looks like red sitting shot, but I don't know. 
extremely close, but I, I'd uh, lean with you there. I, I would, uh, I would definitely hit that and roll to the other side of the house. Like to the edge of four foot or better would be what I would try to do. So somebody in the chat says that Japan may start losing concentration, that that's their worry because it's their third game of the day. Well, I think they're pretty focused. They've definitely called some uh, some uh, big league shots thus far. Yeah, I would definitely say that their concentration is not lacking. They may be a little fatigued, but their concentration is still there. Well, fatigue can certainly come in uh, for the third game game of a day, especially after a long week. Especially as you get older. Well, you would know that better than me, my friend. That is that is true. But you hold your own there uh, pretty well, buddy. As you uh, told me that. Uh, What's it? Flexibility is the key to growing old gracefully. That is accurate. So I'm having a, a powwow with the coach here. Yeah, we got a confirmation in the chat also that, yep, fatigue would be the right word. But yes, uh, flexibility is the key and I'd like to encourage us all to take a little extra time each and every day to do some stretching so Matt what type of stretches would you think are curling specific that might be good well there's a couple of stretches that are really good if you're sitting down in a chair say uh get like a figure four you put put your uh, leg up over top of your knee on the one side and you lean forward and you'll really feel a good stretch uh, right right uh, right near your hip and it'll stretch out uh, your piriformis and your IT band both with that stretch but mainly your piriformis and then you want to stretch out your IT band maybe with some on your lane on your side with like a foam roller. I certainly agree with that. I know the IT band is a very common injury for curlers. Well, now that we successfully filled that time, here is Michael Bruner with his, with his uh, first, uh, first stone away. That's a very and he makes a double take out. Well, we might be on our way to Blank Town again. Or just if I'm Japan, I'm I'm just keeping the blank alive. I'll take it all the way to the last end. This is the side, however, if if he does hit and stick or just roll out to the wing a little bit uh bruner rock in the previous end is the one that just clipped the rock and rolled out if you remember so there's always a possibility he could get a little narrow and miss and therefore still provide an opportunity for two points all right so here's a hit and stick now a hit and stick from Bruner is absolutely pivotal because you just saw uh, Red take a look over there. There's a split possibility if this isn't made, so you must make this hit and stick. Yeah, there's definitely a possibility they could split that other rock on for two. 
if he doesn't stick here. Which, like I said, just previous end, he didn't do that. We have a question in the chat. Blank or keep even hammer? In general, which one is theory? Now, that's a long question. That could be, that could, a lot of people answer that one. So we'll see which one he elects to yeah. uh, take here. Well, he did stick. So the blank is on. And which one is preferred really depends on the team. It's a team decision, skip decision, like what they feel comfortable with going into that last end. Some like to be up one without, or they like to be down one with the hammer. It just depends on the team and what the, how, what their strengths are. And the blank is made, and we're gonna find out how this end game plays out. We're headed to the seventh end of the Alberta Curling Series Major, presented by Hub International here on Curling Stadium. What will tomorrow look like? Will it be what you expected? Or something you could never have predicted? Will it be frightening or exciting? Is it the reason you can't sleep at night or the reason you get up in the morning? Tomorrow will be all of these things. With Hub, you have a partner today who supports you in writing a more resilient, vibrant, and profitable tomorrow, protecting what matters most to you. Because the truth is, tomorrow is a gift, and we want you to be ready for it. So you're a pizza person, but you're married to a wing person, and your kids are salad people? You can't pick your fam, but with over 50 menu items to choose from, you can make them all happy. Order today and enjoy Boston pizza at home. Calling all curlers, novice to pro. Ashram Curling Supplies' patented rotator disc system lets you customize your slider right in the store. Velcro attachments make it easy to find the sliding platform that's right for you. Shop Ashram Curling Supplies, 700 McPhillips, online at ashram.com. Uh, Yannick Gisela. And we're back here. Seventh end of the Alberta Curling Series Major presented by Hub International here on Curling Stadium. We are tied up at two with Rika Yanagasawa with Hammer moving into the seventh end of play. The center guard is up and a draw into the forefoot is on the way for Yanagasawa here to lead things off. Over the last three seasons, Michael Bruner is 0-7 without Hammer with two ends to play. This season, he is 0-2. And over the last three seasons, Yanagasawa is 9-1 with Hammer with two ends to play. And this season, he is 2-1. So, so it's looking like the stats yeah. will tell you that Yanagasawa is in the driver's seat. So that uh, they assuredly knew those stats about each other coming into the game uh, and feel good about the scenario they put themselves in. So we see these, the, the center guard now won in the 12 foot from Burner. Hmm. Now it looks like they're contemplating either the corner free freeze to it or hit or hit and roll I think they should draw another one down and angle it sit like on the center line 
or they could hit it. I definitely but want I to make sure, yeah, I definitely want to make sure you're on the same page here. Yes. And uh Koizumi. It's important, Matt, would you agree that, you know, the guy throwing the stone has to at least be halfway sold on it. Uh at this level the players are usually on the same page with their strategy and they short discussion and they usually come to an agreement but definitely um, the shooter definitely has to feel comfortable with the shot or you shouldn't be calling it for them All right, so here we're gonna find out. Stone's on the way from Koizumi. And it is going to ease on in just short of there. So it is Yanakasawa sitting one and two. Third shot belongs to Michael Bruner. I like that shot. Um, I, I think if it was another one or two inches deeper it would have been perfect but it, it's a good shot and Bruno here is electing to draw around the whole pile now we got a comment in the chat they want stone trajectory overlapped on the ice well we have to get this telestrator to be working a little better before we can do that and trying to get all the way under and they won't it's still going to be shot stone belonging to japan here that was a good attempt though and uh it's just sticking out there unfortunately for team brunner um i think uh, how much can you, you pretty much see at least three quarters of that from the hack yep Oh, I think you can surely see all of it. I, At first, he mentioned hitting and rolling open uh, to it. Yeah, I think that rolling out to the Ooh. wing is okay. It looked like we're, we're going to clean things up instead. Yeah. Peel on the center guard. Again, when you have hammer, you want to clean the center. So it looks like the end plan for Yana Gasella may have shifted to trying to uh, secure a blank and draw for a single point to win in the eighth end. So now Brunner's got to do everything in his power to prevent that. Well, they're still trying to steal. Well, a good attempt to steal is going to elicit a force anyway, so you might as well try to do both, I would think. So the guard's right back up, so it's the same decision. I'd be inclined to, uh, at this point, just... Looks Looks like just another peel. Yeah, they're just they're committed to clearing the center. So Yamamoto with his second stone. Peel called for. Peel made. And, and he literally just threw it. There's something to be said about that. Oh, you betcha. You definitely feel comfortable throwing it. And I think Bruner's going to put it back. He's comfortable uh, trading these for a few. Because Bruner is willing to accept almost any outcome here that is not a blank.
Well, now they're talking about getting that nuisance rock, doing something with that instead of clearing the front. Like they were several rocks ago, right? That does appear to be the call. I'm not sure how much really changed. The guard's really pretty much in the same spot. So with a couple uh, stones burned here, we're going to have a little shift. And now this shot is thrown at me. It's going to leave them sitting three. Look, he looks a little undecided. I think the weight's there. It's all about the line now. Pretty happy with the line now, trying to knife it over a little bit to curl more. Nice and shot. Then, yeah, that shot is made, and they do sit one, two, and three in the house. We have another question from the chat. Earlier today, an accusation from a Canadian fan that Skip Yanagasawa took too long to call his shots, but is it generally wrong to use too much time even in a match where there's no time limit? Uh, well, I'd say that once you reach a, a, high, a higher level and you've been skipping for a while, most of the time the shots are pretty pretty apparent. There's one men there's one maybe two options. Uh, so it should go quickly and I'd say in general when it looks straightforward, you're expected to play uh, quickly. And if you do that your your opponent generally doesn't have an issue with you taking a uh, some extra time. It's I I, I have at least found that you take issue when the shot is there staring at the guy and they don't call. For instance, if there's an open hit shot and there's not much else going on in the end, well, it's an open hit shot. Like, put the broom down and let's go. So, yes, uh, to answer the question is it's, it's complicated depending on a lot of scenarios and variables. But I agree with you, Dave. Most of the time, skips and teams are going to be amicable towards one another if they're playing at a decent pace. And as long as they're not taking, lining up everything, to use golf as a reference, if they're not picking up the grass and throwing it to see where the wind's going, uh, the knack gets to be a little too much at times in the curling game. And I, yeah, I would also add that uh, kind of as a skip, you need to, every once in a while, take a self-assessment and look in the mirror. Look in the mirror when they are either at a bond spiel or whether you're at a club game and say, am I always the last one off the ice? If the answer is yes, you probably need to pick it up a little bit or make sure your team's picking it up a little bit. That's correct. But I would say generally, in competition play, it really doesn't run into a problem too much unless, you know, you're on Kevin Cooey's team. <laughs> he is uh, known to take every second that is allotted to him. They run right up to the clock often. Uh, it's it's legendary how close he can get to uh, zero. But that that is why I am definitely in favor of time games, and I'm also in favor of of however we can get the other team to play quicker. All right, so interesting and brewing here. We have the three Yanagasawa rocks lane shot, two for Bruner. And now we're coming on down with the second stone for Yamaguchi. 
it's gonna hit the long rock and that was the real danger rock that was presented because that was runnable for lack of a better word Well, Team Japan's sitting in a good spot. Team Brunner is trying to figure out what are we going to do now? And what are they going to do now? Well, they could draw behind all of that stuff. But it looks like so far in this game, we haven't seen them curl from the outside that far and curl in so I'm not sure what the ice looks like out there but they could come to the back four back eight and uh, not for nothing uh, to the commenter in the chat uh, the majority of the team team discussions have belonged to team Bruner in this game yes I would definitely say the perception anyways as Team Brunner is taking more time than the Team Japan. Now without it being actually a time game we wouldn't know if that's truly reality but perception that, uh, per, and but perception is your reality. Uh, there's a lot of truth in that. So, Matt, what are you drawing up? If you had to walk down and place a Yellowstone, where where do you want it? I want it in the back four foot. Now, do you get there from the uh, the right side as the team's looking at it, or I think the left side as the team is looking at it from or well, from the front end looking at it. Anyway. It looks like they're electing to uh, shuffle the deck here. Yeah, that's that's probably not a bad idea. This is uh, Bruner's first stone, yes? It is the first uh, stone for Bruner, yep. Yeah, so this is definitely... He could potentially... He could potentially make all three of those red rocks move. Which so Mike, Michael Burner with a key shot here with his first to two in the seventh. Not as much weight as I thought he was going to throw. Trying to walk it over and make it curl just a skosh, and it's going to hit just the one. So, yeah, he was trying to play the hit and roll there. And it didn't quite get to the inside as much as he wanted. And we're talking about we're talking about inches or you know centimeters. Yes, we are the only country that is still backwards and refers to everything in inches. Yes. So just a few more centimeters, but at, at 150 feet away. That's pretty close. Okay, so some options here. Uh, they're considering the promote on their own stone, which I don't, which I don't hate at all. I like that actually. If they were to throw like a back eight weight uh, promote there, the only problem with that is, is they could they would leave open potentially uh, run back from the center. Uh, for Bruner and that might not be so good so I don't hate getting rid of that yellow at all so the broom is down uh, another one of those things this depends on the weight this could be the take out in the yellow it could also be that back back eight back line kind of weight to nuzzle them up some so we'll see in a second what Yannick Asawa decided on it could potentially, if you throw like back line-ish way, it could potentially do both. If you hit half of that yellow rock, it would still move over to the left and raise the other one at the same time. Just depends on where it hits and the weight. 
Well, this is definitely coming down with the cozy weight. On it hard for a line, sweeping it for all he's worth right now. Past the top guard. And not going to remove the burner stone enough. In fact, raises it to be shot, it appears. That is, that is not the result that they're looking for. Okay, so Gruner now back in um, situ situation here where he could possibly find his way to a steal. Bruner has to run back that yellow. Also considering a in off, hit, yeah, a hit and roll in off that uh, red on the outside of the eight foot. Yeah, the in off is there. Uh, the in off is there from the red rock in the twelve foot also. I like almost anything that leaves you sitting two here. Because uh, one false move and you're going to give up a three spot. Well, and this is his last rock also. Yep. Just a straight draw isn't bad. I don't mind a draw one little bit, and I think, I think they're trying to sell him that one right now. If he could get right underneath the red rock on a draw, well, that would be beautiful. So this would be a case, you know, this here's another one of those team conferences, but this would be a case where I say it's a, a thousand percent justified because you can argue that this shot is really the game. Absolutely. So I guess our ultimate answer to how much time is too much time is, it depends. Well, that's what I said. It's complicated. There a lot. It depends on the, a lot of variables. They ask in the chat, yellow, yellow, red. Yes, that shot is there. However, it's, it's a low percentage, high risk shot. It is possibly fraught with peril, yes. And I would say there's a lot of other shots that are higher percentage that are better. This looks like ice for a draw, Matt. I agree. And that's exactly where we're trying to get to. And if, if it slips behind the red, it's even better. But he, he's just one to out count it there on the, on the right side of it, which is fine. Yeah, you just want to do that. You just want to make sure you don't leave a double back for three. That's, that's correct. So it, if they're going to have to watch the line carefully, they don't want to wick off of that red to make that yellow go in front of the other yellow for an easy double for three. So final stone for Michael Bruner. Key shot here in the seventh end on the way. We are on it for sweeping. Now it comes on over. Laying on to it. They're liking the weight. Just trying to make it good. Got to make it real good. And... So it did wick off that red, which I told you was a danger. They potentially could be shot there. I don't know. It's hard to tell. Well, I, I think that the uh, double take the double takeout for three is available right now, Matt. I agree. And then, I think they think that red is shot rock. So they're just going to play for two instead. It looks like. I would. I would definitely still go for that double for three. Well, now I look at it from this view. That's a uh, you're oh, really we, you'd have our, to take you'd have to take the paint off that guard. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That guard is is definitely 
troublesome for what we're talking about. So yes, definitely all they gotta do is hit and roll, hit and stick. Depending on, it, they gotta definitely roll just a little bit inside here. So the final stone on the way for Riku, Yana, oh, Yana Gassel, <laughs> and just, it's going to be just a single. To answer your question from the chat, yes, no reason to go for the high risk shot in that case. Absolutely, 100%. 100%. So it's a single point. They score one, it's going to be Michael Burner down one with hammer going into the eighth end after this. I've been raised on the farm since day one, so I was born into it. My grandfather came in here in 1905. I want to continue the farm for him and generations to come. So. I think it's a privilege that we get to be here. It's just a wonderful way of life. You know, what job is there that you can go to work with your dad and brother, with your kids by your side? It doesn't get much better than that. curlers novice to pro ashland curling supplies patented rotator disc system lets you customize your slider right in the store velcro attachments make it easy to find the sliding platform that's right for you shop ashland curling supplies 700 mcphillips online at ashland.com So here we are back with the eighth end of the Alberta Curling Series Major. It's three to two with Rico Yana Yana Gasawa holding the lead over Michael Bruner from Switzerland. It is Michael Bruner with the hammer here in the eighth and final end. The center guard is up for Japan and the corner guard is on the way. I'm Dave Schmel, joined here by Matt Pring, bringing this final end from the Beaumont Curling Club. Michael Bruner, down one with Hammer over the last three seasons, is three and six. Down one with the Hammer in the last end. This season, he actually is one and oh in that scenario. And in contrast, Team Yanagasawa is seven and three, two and zero oh this season, being up one without. Now we discuss uh, with each other in the break our personal preference, and you mentioned you enjoy uh, having the lead coming home. I do. I like having the lead coming home, no matter. No matter if we uh, are going to have the hammer or without the hammer, but we, you know, we're Steel City. We like to steal, and that's how we eat, and we eat well. We do. If any of you guys uh, meet us in person, uh, uh, we're we're no strangers to food. No, it's no secret. We're foodies. We are foodies. 
So Bruner electing to use his corner guard. Uh, I think this might be the first time we've seen him actually get to, a chance to draw under that uh, corner guard today. It's definitely needing the center, I mean, uh, the corner guard in trying to build this end. So it's clear of all the guards. It's going to be in, but it's going to peek way out the other side. Still pretty good, though. It's 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 uh, overburied. So now Yannick Asawa is going to come right in under the two guards of his own. I would say that was, that was a great uh, draw under that corner guard. Yeah, it turned out a little better than I thought it uh Wood as it was coming down the sheet. Now we have Takiri Yamamoto delivering his first stone. And again, he's from a long line of curlers from his family. And that's going to Come on in, probably not quite as deep as they'd like. Uh, so it's going to be second shot. Michael Bruner is shot on the side of the eight foot. I think you had to ignore that. Yeah. He needs to bring another one down. It looks like he wants, okay, he's attempting here to uh, split, off, split out the middle guard, I believe, and roll up into the house. Past the top one, hitting the middle one, and it's gonna roll clear. So, the primary objectives of that shot was made. Hmm. Yeah, I think what he was trying to do was tap it over like he did, but also roll over to double guard that corner. Right, right. He wants to stay on, right, keep the cover. It just rolled a bit too far. Yeah. So, now, now we're going to see the uh, double peel attempt coming here. And the heat is on. Removing the first one and slipping past the top one, but uh, conveniently leaving themselves the center guard. So that's a nice leave. A little, a little chuckle there from Michael Berner. Yeah, he's like, damn. <laughs> that, uh, that was definitely a great result for a team to pan. So now uh, Michael Berner is tapping the ice as if he's going to just uh, jump into the pool. Well, he still has a lot of stuff that he can do here. And I just draw one behind. Cover here. You got to hope for the best. All right. The draw is the call here. Yeah, I definitely think that's the right call. So it's on the way by Meyer. They're really sweeping it. This has been the bit of the swingier side that we've noticed. And it's going to swing right on in to the full four foot. It's, it, it's exposed, though. You can probably see a good third of that rock from the hack. Yeah, a little sliver is out in. You know, uh, it swung that enough for a draw it's gonna swing enough again for a little uh, tap here so it's gonna be a little tap back coming here 
don't get shot, but one if it's well thrown, I mean, it's going to really put Bruner behind the eight ball. It's it's a lot of ice, I think, right? To remove it. I think he's just trying to move it, not necessarily clear it all the way. Yeah. Now just, here we uh, here we are here we are seeing that knifing motion that is utilized to try to make it curl over. And they're going to come into contact with it, and it's going to get swept back. And it's no longer shot rock. It is behind the T-line, so the shot's made. But it's only the second shot. So it's shot stone for Japan. And now Brunner has a chance to lie, too. Actually, three. Three. He's taking significantly less ice. And this is coming with a little bit more weight. Now we're on it hard for the line. Pass the one. Has a chance to be real good, and good wow. it is. Wow. That was a great shot. That so paper that guard. Absolutely, and that leaves Bruner sitting one, two, and three. Now you got to, uh, you either going to hit and roll in or draw in here, right, Matt? Yes. I, I, that, that ice could be either way. Let's see the release and see what kind of weight he's throwing here. I think that's what they're talking about still. So. We got lots of. <laughs> Lots of wows from the chat. Indeed, that was a wow-deserving shot, the last one. Yeah, it looks like he's drawing. Now, we love, we love this, uh, we love this call. This needs to curl. Now, it's taking the curl. Can you work it over far enough? Got to drag it as far as you can get it under cover, under cover, and right to the back of the pin. That's a, That's a nice draw. Beautiful shot. Not much Team Bruner can do with that, except come on down to it, tap it back a little bit. Well, first we're going to come on down and have a chat about it. Could possibly hit that yellow, their own rock in the eight foot but i don't think it gets to that red if it does it definitely spills so yeah i think their best bet is to draw down to it now if they were to draw down to it and freeze and sit shot i mean team nag kasawa would be hard pressed to do anything about it and then at that point, you might be you might uh, elect to, uh, you know, put the force on take and move the hammer into an extra end. That's that's correct. I like I like the straight draw here, just like just the same shot that Japan just threw. Just just like you know, six inches heavier. So we have seen some good curling in this end by both squads. One of the commenters in the chat, draw would be risky, maybe promotion. I would say it's the other way around. And considering that I am an artist, drawing comes quite naturally to me. You, you are an artist. That is true. Matt is quite the artist, uh, specializing in very large format paintings, uh, but also an artist on the ice. Just ask him. He'll tell you. Other people can tell the story.
All right. So it looks like we're designed to uh, make some noise here. The orchestra is queued up, the, the band is playing, and they're going to remove one and two of those guards, roll the shooter off, and we, well, we've uh, opened up the picture a little bit. Yeah, I don't know that that entirely helped them out too much. Well, you know, you did mention earlier in the telecast that, uh, you know, having center, removing the center guards when you have hammer is always a good idea. And it, you, it, it uh, is. And a, a crucial point here, and we see Yanagasawa has called their timeout. They have two good options here. One, they could throw another draw like they just did. Two, they need to replace the guard. I, they're looking over at that one yellow in, the, in between the eight and 12 foot and as a, in a in like a, a hit and roll in off there. But like, I, that's, that's sure, that's fine. If you'd like to throw that over a draw, whatever you're comfortable with. However, as the result, will be the same and it's harder to throw a hit and roll as we know hardest shot in curling so here comes their coach out to uh, discuss the situation apparently apparently it's bob time that's bob ursel is their coach and Bob is going to try to lay his wisdom on the team yeah I mean, they could hit their own red in the 12-foot into that yellow in the 8-foot and get rid of that yellow. All right, so Coach Bob has had his Time. input. And now it's ultimately up to the curlers on the ice to decide what direction they want to go. I still like to draw. I think Bob liked to draw too. It puts the most pressure on them. I mean, sure, you have to make the shot, obviously, but that's the other thing. Talking about what can be done and then executing is two different things. Now, to go back to some of the conversation we were having earlier, can this team be taking a little bit too long? If I'm Bruner, I'm thinking they're taking a little bit too long right now, especially since they used their timeout. Yeah, usually you come out of a timeout with a pretty good sense of what what you're going to do. And it certainly, certainly looks like they're lined up for a draw right now. which for me personally, I would have just put the broom down to begin with, but that's for me. And we are sitting where we are and they are where they are. It's always easier to call the game behind the glass. And it's even more enjoyable for my couch. <laughs> 
and they're away. All right, so here we go. It's first to two for the Japanese skipper. Now they're going to try to work it over. The Very draw nice. is going to come right on down, and that is well thrown. Very nice. However, they might have been able to set up a double now. Oh, from... wow. Look at this. Look at this. Well, thanks for throwing up that overhead uh, to our crack production squad here. Now, I see if you run, you can run that yellow. Yes. Uh, and, and they're keyed up to go pretty much all day. Yeah, all day. I'm kind of salivating at that one. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I want to go and throw it right now. And All you got to do is hit half of that yellow rock. Yeah, everybody, you know. Half of the yes, yellow. Yes, yes, right there, yes. Throw <laughs> it. Yep, there you go. They're excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. This, this is exciting. The chat's excited. It was a good draw. Now we might get a good shot back. The, the stats are going to change now. Well, we'll see. Got to make it. Big shot here for Michael Burner with his first and two in the eighth end. Everlasting is also excited in the chat box. I saw that. We're all excited. And that, that excitement's going to come to fruition. First and two away, and they're on it right out of his hand. Got to hold the line. Hold the line. You got to get past the guard. They seem happy with it now. Bye bye. And make them both, and you're lying one, two, and three undercover. Count them up. Great shot by Michael Bruner with his first. That's a double, baby. So now, how are we going to counter that, Matthew? Exactly like that. But there, There's a run back. That's what they have to do, the run back. They seem to be looking at the draw right now. I don't like the draw right now. But he did just throw a draw. Maybe that's what he's comfortable with, and you gotta throw with what you're comfortable. But that is a short run back. Now, if we can flip up to the overhead for a second, is a draw to the backing gonna be? Now, the draw to the backing is only good for a second. Right. They have to. They have to play the run back. Now, uh, but. If you don't make that dead, dead perfect, you're opening up to a big multiple score. Well, this is the game. They could, they could, right? Draw to the back of the four. But then, then Bruner can also draw to the back of the four, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is oh, gonna be- that, uh, That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you had to. You had to. Uh, Anywhere that you go to the back of the four, Bruner can get there. Yeah, so you just had to nut this double. That's the only shot. That's. And you have to make the double because if if you jam it, it's gonna sit there biting. And probably and probably be shot rock. Possibly. Got to be really darn close to it. But yeah, you're pretty much gonna hit the double. Thank you for a moment here of the uh, hit and roll in, the big pop and flop. That's I mean, what he's talking about again. That 
it leaves you the potential to end up in the nicest spot. But you really had to control that role absolutely perfectly. I mean, even if they get that, like, even if, like, like, you have to hit it exactly perfect, exactly the right way. Again, hit and roll is the hardest shot, right? Because, oh, sure. because you have to do everything just right, Goldilocks style. So, for instance, if they hit this so hard on the inside, like, and they, it's like a flat, flat double, for instance, right? Like, you couldn't actually probably get that. But if for some reason they hit it and then hit over there that other yellow and they flop into the open, well, that's not good either. There's a whole lot of not good uh, for red right now. That's true. So, I'm not sure. Are they playing that? that hit and roll right now that's what it looks like that yeah it looks like the uh hit and roll is the call so big shot here now i like the draw here and that's good ice for the draw too but uh, it's a hit and roll that appears to be wait for a hit and roll because he had just thrown the draw you know all right so coming on down hit and Whoa! Makes the redirect double. Wow. Holy heck, Batman, but it's going to leave a draw for a second one. Draw for the win. A draw for the win for uh, Michael Brunner. Well, this is what I was talking about. No matter what he did, if he got to the back four, it was gonna, Brunner was able to get a draw for the win. Yeah, I mean, that's like literally the best shot you could possibly could have made there, and it still leaves a draw to the forefoot for your opponent. That's why he had to go for the run back. I concur. So I think, I think when he goes back with Coach Bob, they'll probably talk about that. Of course, Bruner has to throw the draw. Still has to make it. You got to, well, they always say the skip's got to have that forefoot in his pocket. So here we go. Michael Bruner trying to reach into that draw pocket right now. And in this, Final stone at number eight on the way. And in this instance, it has to be full four. Not touching four. It's in the hands of his brusher. Meyer, Patu. Sorry, Meyer and Gerlach. Looks a little bit heavy. Is it heavy? He and got it's good enough for the win. Handshakes. So that is a draw for two for the win for Team Bruner, and they're gonna take the W here by a score of four to three in a well thrown match by both sides. And they will advance to the semifinals here at the Alberta Curling Series Major. And you can catch all those next draws here on Curling Stadium and all the action from all over the curling world available to you at your finger fingertips right there on curlingzone.com. But for now, for the Beaumont Curling Club, for Matthew Pring, I'm Dave Schmel, and I would like to thank all of you for watching. Have a great evening. Have a great evening, everyone. What will tomorrow look like? Will it be what you expected? Or something you could never have predicted? Will it be frightening or exciting? Is it the reason you can't sleep at night or the reason you get up in the morning? Tomorrow will be all of these things. With Hub, you have a partner today who supports you in writing a more resilient, vibrant, and profitable tomorrow, protecting what matters most to you. Because the truth is, tomorrow is a gift, and we want you to be ready for it.
Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your stream curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next curling stadium.